And here we go. We're finally here. Week one of the regular season. Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater breakdown. First things first, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But this is Bridgewater breakdown part one, which is kind of weird to announce on the first video because like you didn't say World War One because there hadn't been World War Two yet. But here's why I'm announcing it because I went through the film and I said, there's 19 clips that I want to break down. Well, 19 clips are going to take me about 40 minutes. Okay. People don't watch 40 minutes. You guys really like that 12 to 20 minute range. I learned this because I finally learned how to get to my YouTube analytics. And now I've learned a lot of stuff about my viewers. And it's scary some of the stuff that I know about you guys. But one thing I know is that you like it 20 minutes at a time. I think you want to watch one, then you want to cool off a little bit because you're annoyed at me, and then you want to come back for another 20 minutes. So we've got part one. If part one gets 100 retweets, so make sure to go over to Twitter. It's going to be in the top left corner. You can see where to follow me. Go over to Twitter or right. Yeah, right, maybe. Anyways, go over to Twitter. Hit that with a retweet. If you hit it with a retweet, if we get 100 retweets, boom, we're releasing part two. If we don't, part two goes by the wayside, never to be seen, which would be kind of sad. But we've got some good, we've got some bad, we've got some corrections in video number one. Video number one is nine clips. Part one is nine clips. Part two, ten clips. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So without further ado, let's jump right into the tape. And here we go. So this was just a really easy steal of a second down play early in the game. So we've got Noah Fant on just a little slant. The Giants are 100% in a busted coverage. Why do I say that? Because this guy comes and rotates down behind. They're in three by two, right? We're in empty. This safety comes down and they end up playing three on three or three on two on this side. But with a stacked defender, this guy widens and just vacates the middle of the field. This is just an unbelievable job recognizing what he's getting from Bridgewater. So look, boom, he recognized it. There's a full vacate in the middle of the field. There's no way that that's correct. I'm willing to bet that this guy's supposed to insert down in here. He's supposed to widen and he's supposed to get to the middle. That would be my guess. But anyways, they rotate the other way. Wide open on the slant. Easy money. Bridgewater does a great job recognizing what he's getting and getting to the right guy. So we love that. We absolutely love that. I also love the fact that they're in 12 personnel in an empty because you can dictate terms now from a personnel standpoint to, you know, you can force the defense into a heavier base personnel than if you're in like 11 or 10 when you go empty, okay? We've just got a little trap pass left. So I want you guys to also pay attention to this one because they run this play twice. We've got trap pass left, meaning we're gonna pull him. So that's when we say it's run action because we have a guy pulling. And they've got XZ read. Okay, these guys are trying to get over the top and just basically run by everybody. If they can't, they're gonna sit down. Okay, this is just a really, really good job of Teddy. Watch this. You're gonna see with the trap pass. Boom, action. Judy does a great job wrapping his defender. He reads it, delivers a strike. Judy comes back a little bit too far. I think he was gonna maybe try to wheel out of there and make a play. But anyways, we... They do the same exact, here's the thing too, they do the same exact look formationally and play later in the game. Same exact one. I'm excited to show you guys that. But here it is again from the tight. We're going to see trap pass left. Boom, really good action. Teddy hits his depth, climb, climb, ball. Or I guess you really should say hitch, hitch, ball. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. Oh, a little zoom to flank right shotgun. This is just big time. So we've got... We would call it F Opal. Well, what does that mean? It means we've got our basic here, okay? And we've got our F on an option route, okay? So he can go anywhere. So that's Opal to this side. And we've got stick. We're just got a mandatory. So when I say MOSR, that's a mandatory outside release, okay? MOSR go. And then the slot, they've got a stick route. He'll get through five and tight turn. Obviously because of this guy's leverage, okay? So let's talk through this from a defensive standpoint. Okay, to me... We've got end, tackle, tackle, end, okay? We've got a Sam linebacker walked up on the ball. We've got a corner out here. We've got strong safety. We've got Mike, and then we've got Will Apex. What does that mean? It's he's splitting the difference between these two. Anytime you have an Apex defender, we're just going to out-leverage him. As long as we get the outside release here to turn this corner, 
we're easy money. So I'm gonna slow-mo it this time. Okay, so you see this mandatory out. Oh, he ends up, yeah. So you see how he ends up fighting right here? He's fighting to get outside. This to me was a bad release. Okay, it's a bad release, but it still gets the job done by widening and holding this corner to where now we've created the separation because we have a widened corner and we have an apex backer. We now have a guy wide open. So I'll give it to you in fast motion so you guys can see, but I wanted you guys to understand the detail of the play. Okay, easy money, Teddy pitch and catch. We're converting. So again, guys, what's the most important down when I'm, at, when I'm playing quarterback in the NFL? Third down. And what did we do? We just converted a key third and three. Was it easy? Yeah. But it wasn't necessarily like so simple because a lot of guys might have thrown the opal, right? It's just, hey, recognizing, okay, here's what I've got, third down. Let me just go ahead and drive the stick route and move the change. So yeah, it's an easy throw for an NFL quarterback. Easy read. But listen, it's the Giants' fault for making it easy, right? It's not like it's it's not like he's going out there and ste it's not like Teddy's dropping down and playing a bunch of high school kids. It's the New York football giants, baby. They made it easy on us. Not our fault, okay? Fourth and eight. Okay, first, give me a second to talk through my pleasure in watching Vic Fangio decide, you know what? Fourth and eight, we're going for it, baby. Plus, I had a little bit of money on the game, so I'm thinking to myself, come on, Vic, let's go, okay? But We've got a little spear concept, and we talked about this in the preseason. We've got to go here. This is like, I want to call it a deep over, but it's not really. It's more. It's called a spear route, okay? I've been learning a lot about it. It's like a hybrid between a shoulder eight and like a deep over, kind of. Anyways, it's a spear route. He's just working his way across, and then boom, we're going to bring the end behind it. Where did we steal this concept? We stole it right from the Carolina Panthers. Okay, fourth and eight, little action, Teddy five steps, navigates in the pocket and delivers a strike. So watch how this influences. You get this guy to run with and you get the trap defender. So you get two guys for the price of one and then behind it, now we're one on one. And so here's a little bit of the nuance of the play. Okay, they're in cover one robber. Okay, so this guy's gonna be deep and this guy's the robber, okay? They have a lot of help in the middle of the field, so then that means these guys are gonna line up outside leverage, okay? Because they wanna funnel these guys towards their help. Well, when we take away two for the price of one with this spear route, we now have an in route against an outside leverage corner and I'm not sure anything is better in the National Football League than running an in route against someone who's outside leverage. So, I'm gonna give it to you guys in fast motion so you can watch it one more time, but that's the details of why this thing works so well, is because we've got a in route dialed up against a guy who's outside leverage. We're already gonna win because we just beat you with alignment. We beat you with scheme. And then Teddy does a great job of knowing why we've already beat them with scheme and alignment and then getting to the right guy. And then of course, delivering a strike. Gotta love it, okay? So this one's bad, right? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna Z short motion down and then we're running naked, right? Which means, hey, we're gonna run play action and get out. We're gonna run boot, okay? And we've got this flat. We're gonna try to pop this corner out. This guy sits heavy. This ball has to go to the end zone for a touchdown here, okay? Right? Guys, like, let's be honest. There is no shot that this guy opens up and runs and beats this guy to the back of it to drop it on the Giants logo. Instead, we try to force the ball here because we feel like we have some sink, which is one of Teddy's issues from the preseason carrying over, and I just throw it off the defender's helmet. We can't have that. We cannot have that. This is the blurriest tight. They had some blurry. The guy needs to learn how to focus the film, okay? But I remember the broadcast Stink was saying, oh, he's throwing to the corner. No, he wasn't, Stink. Yeah, that's just not great. That's not great. And you can see, I mean, Tim Patrick's, you know, he's pretty upset back there. Oh, come on, Teddy, I'm open. My fantasy. So that's bad, right? That was one of the bads. Here's another bad. Okay, we've got Y Shallow Cop F Flutie. So we've got Flutie concept, which is we've got deep post that'll convert to a go outside. We've got the Flutie route, which is real. It's a sail route. I think they're trying to show more. Uh, they're trying to show the Seahawk concept, which is where he sits here. They're trying to show that and then get to the corner. Um, and then they've got the shallow runner here. Okay. 
Third and three, as much as I love the aggressiveness to go ahead and hunt with the football, really, let's be honest, this is an alert, and this needs to be read corner down to the shallow, okay? Corner down to the shallow. Teddy decides, hey, I'm just going to throw the go. If you throw the go on third and three, boy, you better complete that ball, especially with when you look at this look that we end up having with Fant right here and how easy of a conversion this is on third down. You better... I mean, that better be the correct decision. Obviously, it was not. We didn't complete the ball. But, Broncos fans, do not fret because we are going to bounce back and we are going to have this same look. So now instead, we're doing what's called Z-skip. So we're going to Z-skip to it. Same exact formation, though. Same exact play. So they Z-skip to it, but it's the same play. Okay, we've got, the, we've got the tough adjust, or we've got really probably the cloud adjust to this. We've got this corner route that's going to, we're going to make it look like a deep hang first. And then we've got the shallow runner, and then backside, we've got this little cop route, okay? And then watch. Now it's third and six, and then guess what? It, it's almost, it's the same exact coverage, same exact play. We just spice it up with a little bit of motion, and Teddy gets to the right spot and delivers a dime on the shallow, and we convert third down, okay? What's the most important trait to have as quarterback? is to learn, okay? Ted Lasso says, be like a goldfish, right? No memory. Untrue. Quarterbacks remember everything, right? Hey, last time we were in it, on third and three, I threw the go ball. It's a bad decision. I had my shallow runner wide open. Next time we get to it, it's third and six. And instead of going double right shotgun to it, hey, we're going to Z-skip. We're going to make it, we're going to dress it up for these guys a little bit so they don't know what hit them. And then, boom, we're going to hit the shallow and we're going to convert third down. So to me, it's the most exciting thing when you see a guy go from, I didn't convert on this exact play to I did convert on this exact play. Exact look, all the, I mean, it just, it's the makings of a great quarterback, okay? Last clip we have for you. No, it is not the last clip we have for you, okay? Boom, this one I love. This is just like a little, we are, we're gonna call it Y leak. We're, we, stole that, we stole that from Ted at The Athletic. Okay, this, they're selling deep over because they run so much deep over off of action. And then look, we're just gonna go ahead and leak this tight end right here, boom, okay? Watch this. Teddy sells the action. Now look, we spin it up field. This guy does a really good job of staying home, but watch Teddy fit the ball in before him, holds him up, Noah Fant goes and does the rest. It's as good as it gets, man. From a big tight end to be able to run like that, Noah's a special kid. Special, special kid. Okay, look, here's the action. Boom, tries to sell boot partly, comes back, throws against the flow. You just gotta love it. Great design. Love this little concept here. Okay, this is the last clip for us. So we've got a little trout, trout right gun. We've got Opal Y Cop, okay? So this is gonna be a nine stop outside. Boom, okay? We like it against Press Man. We've got the Opal concept again. And then Jerry's gonna get up into the vapor trails against cover one and then break out. You're going to see these guys get caught on each other because they're in man defense. Teddy does a great job speeding his feet up against the pressure and then knowing, hey, we know that when we get into these tight sets, when we get into these flank sets, right, that we're going to, or these stack sets, sorry, not flank. When we get into these stack sets, we're going to be able to get this kind of chaos here, okay? Could you have called OPI there? Probably, but instead it's a good rub. Jerry Judy gets the ball way short of the sticks on third and nine, but guess what? We convert. Plus, this guy decides to throw Jerry Judy literally into the sideline for another free 15. This is just as good as it gets, man. Another third and nine. Third and, we just keep converting. Third down, fourth down. Third down, fourth down. We just keep converting. Man, I love it. I love it. So, Broncos fans, or fans of football, or fans of this channel, that's part one. Head over on Twitter, at T Jenkins Elite, and retweet the tweet where it's like, if this gets 100 retweets, we're gonna release part two, and then guess what? You've got 10 more clips coming to you. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and then hopefully I will see you guys for part two. If you don't get it done, and we don't see it for part two, I'll see you for another video soon. All right, peace.